All right, Delta. How's it going? Yes, all right, thanks, boy. You all right? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. We're back in the garage again, aren't we? Yeah, we're always in this goddamn garage doing something oily and dirty. Oh, I think I see a cat. I want to go and investigate the cat. You crack on, lad. Thanks for that, Delta. I will crack on. Uh, I'm going to do a basic service on my little Suzuki Address 110. Just clicked over 5,000 miles uh, and a little bit. So I'm going to do an oil and filter change. Uh, I'm going to change a spark plug. Uh, we're going to clean out the cooling fan filter, which is down there. Uh, we'll have a look at the air filter, but I think that's okay. Uh, we'll do the gear oil, which is down the back here. And possibly one or two other things. So let's get stuck in. First things first then, as you can see, we're up on the centre stand, which means that all the oil will drain out nicely. Uh, I've just been for a run on the bike and it's been sitting there for maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes maybe, so hopefully the oil has cooled down a little bit. But we do need the oil a bit warm uh, because it helps to drain out when it's, uh, when it's warm because it's a bit thinner. And it also helps to pick up any uh, junk, any particulates, any horrible things that you don't want in the oil. It picks those up and then when you drop the oil, it all comes out at the same time. Right, here we are scrabbling about on the floor. Uh, you can see there, I've put the silver mess tin just in front of the centre stand. Uh, and directly above that is the uh, drain plug, which has a 17mm head on it. So we're going to see if we can take that off now. Right, I am now underneath the bike. I've got my 17mm socket there. And I'm aiming at the drain plug, it's just here. Shouldn't be on especially tight. I'll do the rest of it, do the rest of it by hand. Here we are, that's the oil coming out now. Okay, so now the oil's draining out. Uh, I've just taken the opportunity to have a look at the drain plug. That's what that looks like. And cleaned out the inside. Check the condition of the O-ring. Uh, they do recommend that you replace those uh, each time you change the oil, but I think that looks all right to me, so I'm gonna give that one a go. And uh, move on, do a few other things while the oil finishes uh, dripping there. So while the oil is dripping, I'm going to have a look at the air filter, which is in this little housing here. Uh, it has eight screws holding the cover on. Uh, seems excessively large amount of screws to me, but hey, what do I know? So I'm going to take those off now. Right, that's all of those screws released. Uh, so the cover just pulls off like that. Uh, you can give that a little clean out if you wish, or just pop it to one side. Uh, the air filter itself is here, and again, just pulls out. It has uh, this gauze on the inside, and the filter material on the outside. So I don't know if you can see that. It is a bit dirty. Uh, inside there is actually not too bad. Uh, so that's how that comes out. And to replace it, all you would just do is put your new one in there and screw the cover back on. You'll notice that I'm using the drill to do this, uh, but it is on its very lowest torque setting so as not to over tighten the screws. So you can see I'm actually able to hold that. So all I'm doing is I'm just using the drill to do the donkey work of putting all eight screws in and then I'll get an actual screwdriver uh, and just tighten those up by hand. So all eight screws are in there now. Uh, I'm going to use a screwdriver just to put the last little twist on there, just to make sure that they're tight without over tightening them. Right, the next bit then is the cooling fan filter, uh, and that lives here. Uh, there's an eight mil bolt just there, and another eight mil bolt just there. So I take those out and investigate what's inside. Okay, so. Taking the uh, bolts out of these, the one that is uh, the highest on the bike and nearer towards the back of the bike is a fairly short one. 
the one that's at the bottom, nearer to the front of the bike, is a fairly long one. Uh, but with those removed, we can wiggle this free now. And it comes out as one piece. So what we need to do is um, remove this screw and see what's inside. Okay, I removed the screw that was here. So this cover has a little clip thing here and another little clip here. And it, the top just lifts off like that. Um, there is this little contraption which lives in its corresponding holes over on the lid. So I'll just put that in there now. So that's the lid with the thing on. And then in this bit, we've got the cooling fan filter itself. It's just a piece of foam, basically. Uh, it doesn't appear to be oiled in any way. It seems like just a dry piece of foam. And what you have to do with this is uh, brush it off, clean it off. You can use compressed air um, or anything really to just clean off any debris, uh, any dirt, dust, or anything that's manky in there. Um, so I have done that, we'll do that again. And we'll put that back on. Right, the cooling fan filter is now uh, clean or cleaner. Um, I have cleaned that off as best I can. So it's going back in the housing. We've got the lid with the plastic bits on there, which fits over the filter and keeps that in place. The clips need to be clipped back on, top and bottom. You need to put the screw back in there, which I'll do in a second. And then on the back here, you can see this one's falling out as I've been working. Uh, there is a, a rubber sealing ring, so you need to just check that and make sure but that sits in its groove just there. Like that. So I put the screw back in and we'll get this back on the bike. Right, it's all back together. Just going to put the uh, screw in. And then we'll uh, put that to one side for now because that gives us better access to the oil filter housing. If you remember, we've dropped the, the oil. It is still dripping out there, uh, but the oil filter lives in here. As I mentioned then, the oil filter lives behind this little cover here. And on either side of that is an eight mil bolt. Um, I have pre-loosened those. So I'm gonna remove those completely now and we'll take the cover off and see if we can discover the oil filter underneath there. There we are, you can see as we release that, all the oil that was inside that filter housing has started to drip down. And luckily, the mess tin was at the right angle, so it did catch most of that. Not all of that, but most of that. So there's the cover. It has a little spring. In there, there's also an O-ring which should be inside the cover there, so we'll just pop that in before I forget. So there we are, that's the cover, spring and o-ring. As with all the o-rings you do need to check uh, check the condition of it, make sure that looks like it's actually going to seal the next time you put that back on. So we'll clean that up in a second. Let's see if we can fish out the oil filter. Here we go, oil filter fishing. There's the oil filter. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, that's quite dirty. It looks like it might be in need of a change. It's a good job we're doing this. Okay, so we've got the oil filter out. Um, it did leak a little bit as we removed it. So we just need to get a rag of some kind or some tissue paper and just gonna clean up around the whole area here as best we can before we put the new oil filter in. Guess what boys and girls, we've got some light. We can see what we're doing. And what are we doing? Well, we've cleaned out the oil filter housing there of the old oil as best we can. Um, we have the new oil filter, whoops, 
which is this one, the High Flow Filtro HF 973, um, which looks just like the old one. There's a an open end there where you can see inside, and a closed end which needs to be nearest to us. So popping that in there, the reversal of our fishing earlier on, and then we need to put the cap back on. So I'm just going to clean that up and then we'll do that. Right, there's the cap all cleaned up, or as much as necessary anyway. I didn't uh, go to town on that too much. And we've got the ceiling ring in there and the spring. Important to remember that. And we have to try and get this back in here. We're pressing the spring against the top of the filter to hold that in place. And then we have to get the 8mm bolts in there. Okay, so we've got the cap back on, um, not all the way, you can see. I'm um, pushing that against the filter, taking up that spring pressure and tightening the 8mm bolts. And what I'll do, this little screwdriver has space for a little socket on the end. So I'll just do a little, slight little extra bit of a turn on those. Uh, but I'm not putting a lot of tension on those. They are tight, but not very tight. Okay, progress update. That's all on there now. The old oil has drained out. The filler cap is still off, because what we need to do, if you can see this, in there, just here, there is a gauze filter so I need to take that out and clean that. I think it's just a case of pulling it out. Yeah, there we are. Some more oil has come out. But that is now released. So we'll have a look at that. Right, just having a look at the uh, filter gauze there off the bike. This top piece comes off uh, you can see in there there's nothing complicated it's literally just a sort of wire basket so it's a case of cleaning that out with a rag or um, tissue or something and uh, just making sure that the rubber piece is back in the top nicely and then popping it back up into the engine block we've got the filter gauze then uh, I've cleaned up round the engine block with the rag and that went that way actually didn't it um, so it goes up with the rubber end in first so push that up gently till it stops and then we'll put the filler cap back on which if you remember we cleaned that up earlier so we'll start to wind that on now so we can get that thread engaged There we go. Uh, so this has to be tightened, I believe, to 35 Newton meters. Which if you're doing it without a torque wrench, um, is not especially tight. I'll see if I can find a 17, hold on. Right, here we go. Let's have a guess at 35 Newton meters. So we're sort of turning it until it stops. I'm not really pressing, putting any pressure on that at all. Uh, it's just stopped there. And then what I'll probably do is just give it a little bit extra like that. If you do over tighten that, all you will do is crush the rubber sealing ring, uh, destroying that, uh, which will allow all the oil to leak out. So you don't want to over tighten that. But if you do have a torque wrench, I'd recommend using that. And I think, as I said, it was 35 Newton meters. So the oil filter is all back together. Uh, with the cover on, that's nice and tight. I've just put the sump plug back in and tightened that to 35 Newton meters. Uh, obviously the old oil is all out of the way. There's no oil in the bike at the moment. But we've done with this bit now. So we can put on the cooling fan filter housing, uh, which is just a case of wiggling it back where it came from. Seating it where it feels like it needs to be. It's very solid there. Uh, it does feel right and then putting the two bolts back in and if you remember there's a long one and a short one and the long one went at the bottom and the short one went at the top so 
I'll just tighten those up now. This cooling fan filter housing is back on now. The uh, 8mm bolts are back in. I'm just going to give that a little wipe down because it's got my greasy fingerprints on it. Uh, and then we'll move on. Right, so we've changed the oil filter. Uh, that's all nice and snug. We've put the drain plug back in. So what we need to do now is put the new oil in. So I'm around the other side of the bike now, over on the right hand side. And here I am, here's the dipstick. And I'm taking the dipstick out. We'll uh, clean that up and have a look at that in a second. And what we need to do is put 700 milliliters of, uh, well this is 10W40 uh, semi-synthetic motorcycle oil uh, down, down the hatch there. And that's what I'll do now. Okay, here we are. I've got my funnel. I've got my oil ready. The dipstick's out. It's really simple. It's just a case of uh, using a funnel into the dipstick hole there and pour in the 700 millilitres of oil down in there. Right, the 700 millilitres of oil is down in there now. Um, I've got the dipstick and using the rag I've just cleaned the dipstick a little bit. Uh, I've cleaned around the dipstick hole. There were one or two little drips of the oil as I put that in. Um, so I'm going to put this in all the way and screw it all the way home for now because for checking the oil level on this bike, it says you have to start the engine and run it for three minutes and then wait for three minutes and then check the oil level. So I put that all the way back in so I don't fly oil out all over the garage and I'll start the bike up and run it for three minutes. While this is running uh, for the three minutes, it's a good opportunity to just have a look around underneath uh, at the drain plug and round the other side at the filter housing and make sure that there's nothing leaking, there's no oil coming out of that. Uh, it would be a shame to waste all your nice new oil. For those that are interested, this is the oil that I've used. Uh, so it is 10W40 four stroke motorcycle oil. Cool. So that's been running for three minutes and what I need to do now is wait for another three minutes and then check the oil. So start the clock, let's go boil an egg. Right, three minutes are up and our egg is ready. I switched off the bike and now it's time to check the oil. Uh, so it's fairly simple. Remove the dipstick, clean the dipstick and then you have to place the dipstick back into the hole but not screw it in so we're just going to place that on the threads that is not screwed in and then we can remove that and have a look at the oil level so that to me looked a little bit low I'm just going to check that again so yeah that to me looks a little bit on the low side uh, so I'll top that up as necessary and then I'll keep an eye on that for the next few days to make sure that's uh, where it should be. Out of interest I just measured the old oil to see how much came out and it was, I don't know, what would you call that, 875 millilitres. The level was good with the old oil so I'm guessing that's around about what I'll need to put in to bring this up to, uh, to a full mark. Cool. Uh, it was pretty low uh, when I put the 700 milliliters in. Obviously I measured the old stuff at 875, so I did put a little bit more in. Uh, I ran the bike for another three minutes, let it sit for another three minutes, and you can repeat that process as many times as you need. But now, the oil level is uh, on the high end of the dipstick, so that's where I'm wanting it to be. Um, as I mentioned before, I'll check that over the next few days as I'm riding, uh, just to make sure that, that stays where it should do. Uh, I'm not anticipating any problems, but it's good to just keep your eye on it for a few days at least. Next job then is the gear oil. So we're at the back of the bike. You can see here uh, there are two bolts. This one is the drain plug for the gear oil, and this one is the filler plug for the gear oil. Uh, they're both 12mm uh, heads on those. So it's good practice to check that you can actually get the filler 
undone before you start releasing oil because if you release all the oil out and then that one's stuck, uh, you're buggered basically. Uh, so make sure you can undo the filler one before you release the uh, drain one. That's what I'll do now. Okay, so the filler one first. I have pre-loosened these. I know that these will come out. But as I mentioned, do the filler one first. So that will sit there for a second and I'll release the drain bolt. When I release this, I'm expecting the gear oil to come shooting out. Well, didn't really shoot out, but it is coming out. So I'll let that drain for a while. The old um, gear oil is um, all in there now. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. I've just used a towel to clean around the filler cap and the drain plug. So I'm gonna put these back in now. Each of these bolts has a little um, a little washer, so make sure you've definitely got one washer on either one. So there's the uh, drain one in. So I'm just gonna nip that up a little bit, not super tight. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but that says 90 mil. Uh, and what that means is you put 90 mil of oil in there, as you might have imagined. So what I have here is 90 mil of uh, the same engine oil that I've just put in the engine. I was expecting it to be gear oil, but uh, it's not. Apparently it wants the same 1040 engine oil as we used up front. So there's 90 mil. The idea, I believe, if it's anything like any of the other ones I've ever done, is that you pop that in there and when it is full, it starts to overflow and that's the correct level. So you basically fill it until it starts to uh, come out again. I don't want to waste too much, so I have got 90 mil here and we'll try and get that into there. There's 90 mil of oil and it's now inside here. So I'm happy that that's got the right amount. Just cleaning the few dribs that came out there, putting the filler bolt back in. I'll just nip that one up. And then down on the tire here, uh, though just another couple of drips again. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure that there's nothing on the tire. Don't wanna set off down the road and end up binning it. Yeah. That'll do. So that's the uh, that's the gear oil done. Now we're getting somewhere then. We're nearly there. Uh, the last job is to change the spark plug. That's the last thing I'll cover in this video. And uh, it's fairly easy to do. First step is to get the seat open. I'm going to give us lots of access so we can see what we're doing in here. So that means removing uh, one, two, three, four screws there. There are another two screws down on here and then we've got four one two three four ten mil bolts down in the bucket. Once we've removed all of those uh, we can take the bucket out, the seat off, uh, it should come out as one piece and also this front uh, little panel here and uh, you'll see we've got loads of access at that point. With the four bolts released from inside the bucket and the two screws at the back, we're now able to lift the whole seat and bucket contraption off in one go. Which gives us this view here. You can see down into the engine now and you can see on the right hand side of the engine, just there, the little black cap. That's the spark plug cap and we need to uh, pull that out, try and do this and show you at the same time, a little bit tricky, let's have a look, there we go, so that's the spark plug cap and you can see the spark plug down in there, um, if you still have this thing, 
then you are golden. This is the spark plug removing socket uh, that should come with the bike. That actually lives, uh, here's the seat and the bucket over here. Let's see if I can lift that up. That actually lives uh, just on the inside here, along with this screwdriver. So those should come with your bike. But if they don't, I'm sure you can find something that'll do this job. But for now, we're gonna use that to remove this spark plug. So this is where the filming gets a little bit interesting because it's quite dark in there and there's not a lot of room. But you can see the end of the spark plug there. Um, I'm gonna take the spark plug socket, I pop that on there, make sure it's seated nicely. You know, it's all the way down there. It's not just right on the very tip, it is all the way down there. And you can see there's a hole here and a hole on the corresponding on the other side. And I've got a screwdriver through there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that now using the screwdriver and hopefully start to release the spark plug. Actually, I will do this from the top. The access is a little bit better. Uh, so you can see the screwdriver there going down into the socket thing there. So I'm going to turn away from me. A little bit tricky. I think that did start to turn. It shouldn't be in super tight. So hopefully I can now turn that by hand. Right, there were a lot of threads on that, or at least it felt like there were a lot of threads on that. Uh, but the spark plug is now released, which means it should just come out of the uh, gap there and be withdrawn for inspection. Here's the new spark plug then. It's directly uh, replacing the old one. Uh, and to that end it is exactly the same number. So it's the CPR7EA9, which is a standard plug. And I've just checked the gap, although they are fairly accurate from the factory. Uh, it's worth checking, it should be 0 0.8 to 0.9 mil between those two points there. And it is 0.85 mil, so I am happy with that. So we're going to put this one on the bike and uh, get everything buttoned up. Getting the new spark plug in here is uh, is quite interesting. I have started this one off now. Um, it's mainly a question of the access. The access is not great to do this. Um, but take your time, make sure it's going in squarely. Turn it as much as you can by hand to make sure that you're not cross-threading this spark plug into the engine because if you do that, uh, you're setting yourself up for a world of pain basically. Um, so yeah, do as much as you can by hand and then get the little the little jobby that we use to remove it on there and tighten the rest up with this. So I'm going to do this until it stops turning. There are a lot of threads on this spark plug. It seems to take a lot of turning, um, but it does eventually get there. So now that's stopped and we can just maybe not quite at this angle, but we can try and get the screwdriver in there again, just to nip that up a little bit. So we're just turning that just another little fraction, just to make sure that that's tight in the engine block. Again, don't over tighten it, just nip it up and that's enough. That is in there now, I have nipped that up. It's just a question now of getting the uh, spark plug lead back on again. Access is pretty, uh, pretty tricky, but doable, doable. So just push that quite hard, make sure that's gone all the way down to the bottom uh, and then it just clips into this little clip here. So that's the spark plug changed and the lead back on. So that's that. The last thing we need to do is just put the seat and all the plastics back on. I've just put the bucket and the seat roughly in place for now. Uh, just wanted to show you this. We've got the three little tabs on the back end there and they need to go underneath like that. Uh, then it's just a case of lining up all the plastics. Take your time again. You can see that there's a little bit of movement there all around. So just make sure everything's lined up before you start putting the screws in. Well, that's it. We're all back together. Um, one little tip just to share with you. If you uh, were to tighten some of the screws and then attempt to put some other screws in, the holes don't really line up. So the best thing to do is to put all the fixings in. So that's these four screws here, 
uh, and the two down at the bottom there put the, the four bolts in but do them all loosely so that the plastics can all move still and just that little bit of movement allows you to get uh, the other fixings in and when, when everything's all halfway in at least uh, and you've got everything all the threads engaged everything like that then you can um, tighten those down the whole way back to how they should be so yeah that's um, that's the basic service done all that remains is to attempt to start this thing and make sure I've done this right so if she fires up we'll call this a job done yeah well I guess that's done cool she ran like a dream so we're all finished that was the basic service on the Suzuki address 110 hope it was helpful for you if you've got any questions just leave us a comment remember to uh, like this video if it was useful to you and subscribe if you fancy watching some more uh, and for now I'll say goodbye and we'll see you next time